time to get busy again. Welcome back to the channel. I'm still alive. Life is still rolling and becoming a new normal, I guess, this day and age. As you can see, I removed the tire and the wheel weights. Those buggers are like 250 pounds a piece. That sucked. And the tire itself, filled with calcium, probably weighs about a ton, almost 2,000 pounds. That sucked too. I actually did them last week and I got to the point where I had to remove this large nut which also sucked <laughs> to get off this inner disc which will not come off so it's been soaking for a week with some deep creek because we are going to attempt to weld the stub the axle stub I'm almost fully YouTube certified on a cast welding. So today I ended up getting a three, well, three arm puller. I'm supposed to do up to a 24 inch disc. So it should be big enough to spread across this. We're gonna give it a go to see if I can pull this disc off. It doesn't look too rusty inside, but it is keyed. So I've been, uh, I've been trying to soak it with that deep creep to get in there because just prying it off from behind and hitting it with a hammer, I can't get it to move and I don't want to crack this cast. So assemble this uh, three iron puller, put it on there and give it a go.
well, I've been heating on this thing for about an hour and cranking this puller tighter. It's moving about a half a turn every time I uh, heat it. But there's no movement on the shaft, so I can only assume it's just stretching this puller. So, oh, guess I'm gonna have to abandon this idea and try to remove the whole axle stub with the disc on it. The shaft, I need to take the shaft out of the axle stub, but I can, I can do it in all one piece. There's a clip on the back side. I was just hoping to get that off to make it a lot lighter and a lot easier to handle. But we'll get rid of this puller. Start taking off some nuts and bolts in behind here. The uh, fender itself is uh, supported onto that axle as well as come U-bolts. Get them taken off, and she's coming off in all one piece. All right, so here's where we're at so far. I actually have both tires removed. She's supported on the center by a bunch of large blocks. I do have these jack stands owed at the axles. They're not actually touching the axle. They're probably probably about a half inch away from it but they're just to make sure that as I work on one side and I do get to the point where I'm going to remove this that the extra weight doesn't roll it over it'll have something to sit on but because I can't remove this disc we're going to take this off in one piece and the clip is in behind the fenders do got to come off on both sides the work platform, which are these two steps here, they have to come off. And then we have to split this transmission. The complete ass end of this tractor is coming out. That's your PTO drive, your PTO clutch packs, your hydraulic remotes, your hydraulic remote drive, and your hydraulic pump is all in here. This whole ass end has to come off for two nuts that are on the inside to get these axle stubs off. My original plan was to remove the disc, remove all the bolts, and slide that axle stub off, leaving the shaft behind. But there is no way I can get that disc off. So this job just become massively larger. So I've taken the bracket off here, all these tractors are different. All these 800s are different. They go from 800 to 8, uh, I think 812, I think. And there's different series in, within those as well, too. Mine is the 802B, which is a Western style, which are these larger fenders that a lot of the tractors don't have. So this bracket actually holds the fender on. It clamps the axle, and it goes all the way around the inside of this skirt. And then there's this other bracket here that comes from the corner into the frame, which gives it stability. So I removed all these onto the bottom. The whole back side of this is free. <clears throat> then I remove these bolts here, and then across the front of this fender, which is this bracket here. Then this whole fender will come off, and it'll be wide open to work on. I'll then go over to the other side, to this side, remove it as well too and then start cleaning up all the crap in here. There's at least two to three inches of dirt. So anyway, see you in a few. One fender off. Man, does she look bare without that fender on there. There must have been about 40 Little nuts and bolts the whole way along here, all the way out. Next step now is to get this uh, foot pan off that travels down to the back. It's one on each side. And that'll give us clear access to the whole rear end of this tractor. we will also be able to get underneath here and get cleaned as well.
Here we are, one side completely taken apart. She's quite the ordeal. There's a lot holding that on, not to mention the clutch pedal and this bracket assembly that was underneath there that bolts the side of the transmission. And also I had to take the bolts off the back side, the axle stub here because they're actually part of the bracket that holds that on. Well, I got about 60 years of mud and grease and crap and enough 22 shell casings to figure out there must have been waging a war on uh, gophers. <laughs> Probably pretty common for a farmer tractor. Anyway, that was one complete side undone. Still got the other side to do. I'm not going to video that. It's going to be a wrap for today. It's good to get back on the case. Get back out working on her. So next week, hopefully she'll be stripped, ready to go, and ready to remove the back half of this transmission. Have a safe week, everyone. Thanks for watching.